Welcome back to the Ping Cellular One LPGA Golf Championship of 1992 at Columbia Edgewater Country Club and the final round with Barrett and Lopez at eight under par. Stevenson in the clubhouse. Jane Crafter out on the golf course. Regaris Dotty out there. And this just moments ago at the 17th. Lopez, her tee shot. She had trouble here yesterday, drove into the right rough. Looks like Nancy's hitting a three wood here today, and I think that's a smart. She was way right yesterday, and this one looks perfect. It is. Yes, sir. And it's very long, Jay. That's where some players have hit with their drivers. Now Jane Crafter with her driver. And that's a big one. Show you the tee shot of Tina Barrett. Tina with her driver. Now the last tee shot Tina hit went to the right, and guess what? Oh boy! And she has a problem in the right rough. This is the 17th. And you heard Rosie Jones say you need to hit it down the left-hand side to have a shot to the back right part of the green and that's where the pin is today. It's a sloping fairway from left to right. Lopez is in perfect shape. So is Jane Crafter. But Tina Barrett's going to have trouble getting to that back right pin place. And it's a three level green. It's a tough one. The 17th hole playing at 4.21 yesterday. 12 birdies, 38 bogeys. One of them belonged to Nancy Lopez who finished bogey bogey. There were two double bogeys. So it's advantage Lopez right now. And the one club that you have to perform well with at Columbia Edgewater is your driver. It sets you up on every hole. It's a tight golf course, protect, particularly the finishing holes. And you can see Tina now 15. Now here again at 17, the driver is costing. And this has been a hallmark for Tina Barrett this year. She is fourth in fairways hit. Doing very well as far as driving accuracy goes. Let me report to you that Caroline Keggy made that rather sizable par putt at 18 and she finishes at five under par a good tournament for Caroline. Now the perils of Tina Barrett I do not believe she can get well I know she cannot really get back by the pin now she's trying to figure out where she can get on the green from this point. If she gets it on the front level she's going to have a good hundred foot putt up or, uh, over three levels and she may just be playing out to the fairway and then try to wedge it back to the pin placement. A lot of decisions to be made. Lopez, remember, is in perfect position right in the middle of the fairway. Swing back from the green. And she is back there behind that tree. You can see her make the movement back there. Barrett, who an hour ago had a four shot lead, now tied for the lead, and problems abound for her here in the right rough at 17. See, she's choking up on the club, more than likely to punch it out. Well, she's looking down there, and the question is did it get out? I think it's out, but I would my guess is she's a good maybe 75 or 100 yards from the pin. Tina shaking her head, let her head down. She's seen that nice lead go by the boards. And if we remember Jay again last year, you can see where she is in front of the green, but she's a good 75 yards to the pin. This is the hole that Karen Davies had trouble with and lost the tournament. So 17 has really been the pivotal hole. Davies knocked it out of bounds here a year ago when she was tied with Michelle Estel for the lead. Lopez. Looks like Lopez has a six iron. Thinking maybe at this point about victory number 46 on the LPGA Tour. <laughs> the hill but it is on the green and that's one step ahead of Tina at this point. This is a tough green triple tiered. The hole a slight dog leg to the right. Jane 
crafter. She's driven in fine shape. Now you're thinking Jane Crafter outdrove Nancy Lopez, but let's remember Jane used to drive her and Nancy hit a three wood. As Crafter is not known for her length. Little side hill live, all below her feet. six under par. We'll be back for more coverage from Portland and Oregon after these messages from your local station. <laughs> Tina Barrett's third shot at the 17th. Just about 75, maybe 80 yards to the pin on the back level and you know, it's not going to bite coming out of that rough and the green is hard up there. Look at that ball Another bounce. Angle of it. Of it. But it's makeable. Mm -hmm. She can still make that to salvage her par. Lopez with a longish putt coming up for a birdie. And Nancy would be very happy just to get this down in two from where she is. You get an idea of this green here. It's, it's triple tiered. And she has a pretty good hill to go up. Much more so than it looks on the screen. You can see her caddy's tending the pin, so it tells you she's not that close. She's probably a good 30, maybe 35 feet. It gives you an idea of how much higher up in the air the caddy is than Nancy. Right. And she really has to aim it almost at her caddy's left foot. It's just about how much break there'll be. Maybe a little more. tell you that she bogeyed 17 yesterday not by a three putt but she did bogey it so 17 playing havoc with both Tina Barrett and Nancy Lopez and look at that she hit it a good 10 feet past the hole Jay and the expression on her face one of grim determination and also some disappointment here you see the big swing and it just kept on going Barrett. And this putt from the fringe is going to be so fast. I mean, it is straight downhill. Again, the greens are today about an 11 on the step meter, and that's that's faster than almost any place that the men or the women play. She could knock this in. Put her back in the driver's seat. This is getting very interesting. It is, and you know, the last few years, Jay, Patty Sheehan made the putt on 18 to win. Michelle Estel made the putt on 18 to win. It looks like we're going to come down to the 18th hole again. Jane Crafter, if she could knock this in and get to six under par, would be, I'm sure, very, very happy, and uh, she could still get to seven under so uh, she's not out of it no not at all Nancy a uh, little hot under the collar there mm, <laughs> pulling it away yes, nice sir this is a left to right breaker and also downhill Turner uh, still with a chance to win this tournament if she can make this Six. 
six at six under. Now Crafter with one hole to play at six under. And it would appear that Lopez and Tina Barrett may make bogeys here or who knows. Now Nancy's facing a putt that is so quick. Just a few holes ago, Jay, we were looking at maybe breaking the tournament record, which is nine under par by Ayako Okamoto in 1986. And now they're slip sliding away. Barrett's score of 135 was the best ever 36 holes posted in this tournament. Lopez for par and the lead. what you call the thin lip situation. A little disgust. She'll tap this in. And then Tina, of course, she still has a good 10, maybe 12 footer for her bogey. Lopez at seven. Wonder where Jan Stevenson is right now. She's in the clubhouse at six and wondering if she might not have a chance to get involved in a playoff. I'll guarantee you she has not left the premises. I bet she's in the locker room checking it out and maybe putting her spikes back on right now. Barrett with an uphill left breaker. She misses this. She will have double bogeyed 16 and 17. Or 15 and 6, 17, I should say, and will have lost her lead. toughest finishing holes that we have on our tour um, because you have to place your drive um, left center is a good spot and then um, you have to remember to keep the, the approach shot short of the hole because uh, when you cut downhill on that green, you, know, you can virtually not stop the ball so um, the approach shot should be just a little bit short of the pin and then uh, give yourself a nice little birdie opportunity but uh, you know just to put the the drive in the, in the appropriate spot is key. The drive in the appropriate spot is key. And here is Jane Crafter coming off the birdie. Now only one shot out of the lead. Big gallery with this final group and a big, big crowd awaiting the finish of this one. If, in fact, we have a finish here at 18 up and around the green. Yeah, good drive. That's perfect, Jay. You hear somebody say good drive. Well, that's split the middle all the way, right down the center and long. Okay, Jane's gone to that carbon graphite headed driver, and she has added some distance. Pat on the back from her caddy, Lopez. No, and I'll guarantee you there's, there's going to be some club head speed in this one after the three putt on the last hole. Lopez has her driver. Heard she and say left center is the perfect spot. Big fairway bunker looming on the right hand side. The crowd here at 18 just made aware on the scoreboard as to what happened back at 17. Downhill lie. 
five, but she really nailed that. She's only about 135, maybe less to the pin. Now, Tina has hit two bad tee shots, 15 and 17. So this is a big, big shot for her. Normal action is to work the ball from right to left. She missed those two fairways to the right. They like this one. coming down and right in the center. The 18th here at Columbia Edgewater. Well, as Patty Sheehan talked about, the tee shot's so important. Those fairway bunkers on the right come into play, but all three of these players in the last group missed them. Lopez is well ahead of them. Both Crafter and Barrett are pretty much to the side of them. Now the green, look at it, guarded by water front left, bunkers all around, but the water really comes into play today. The pin is up in the front left, but the back bunker also comes into play, Jay. Nine double bogeys here yesterday, seven birdies. It played as the most difficult hole, 4.44. The final group coming down this 18th. And what a finish we're in for, I think. We'll have more from Portland in a moment. The drama building here as Vicki Fergon and Marta Figueres Doty and Kelly Robbins have just finished play here on the green at 18. Fergon with a 76, Robbins with a 76, Figueres Doty with a 71. She finished at five under par. Fergon and Robbins both even par for the tournament. Now Tina Barrett's second shot here at the home hole. Just about 145. She's right in the center of the fairway. Six iron. Pin high left, about 20 feet. Jane Crafter will be hitting from almost the very same spot. And again, I have to just say how long Nancy Lopez hit her drive. She's a good 20 yards in front of both those players. Crafter, just one shot out of the lead. Jan Stevenson also in the clubhouse at six under par. Bugaris Dottie, Donna Andrews, Caroline Keggy, all at five under par. Oh, good swing. Right at the flag if it's the right stick. Don't count the lady from Australia out yet. Now, as Jane waves to the crowd, we look back down the fairway. Lopez has a couple decisions to make here. I think she's in her nine iron range, but she carries two nine irons. One's a cast headed nine iron, the other is a forged headed nine. Now, she may take the eight iron and knock it down, or she may take the nine and try to hit it hard. Looks like she's got a bit of a downhill lie. Again, I think she's about 135, the very most of the this Hall of Famer Nancy Lopez putting for birdie on the 54th hole of this championship crowd around the green is watched. Tina Barrett has come close on her last two putts. Jane Crafter has a chance to tie if Tina Barrett misses. 
Let's lot of excitement. Let's tell you that this broadcast is brought to you by and is the exclusive property of the LPGA and any rebroadcast or other use of the program without the express written consent of the LPGA is prohibited. Tina has a very makeable putt, although it's going to be very, very fast above and beyond the hole. Oh, she's about 18 feet. We should break from her left to right. If we have a playoff, it would start right here at 18. They go right back to the tee and then go 16, 17, and 18. There's a good view of the line of the putt. I would say it's going to break a good six, maybe eight inches from her left to right. Lopez, all she can do is watch at this point. Barrett made the turn with a four-shot lead over Lopez. They're now tied, but Barrett will break the tie and win this tournament with this putt. Jane Crafter makes, Tina Barrett misses, then Lopez and Crafter in a playoff. Have a chance for a three-way tie, a chance for a two-way tie. And at this point, no one can win it. Only someone can lose it. Jane and Crafter. You know, Crafter, I'm sure, is thinking this putt has got to go in for me, but at the same time, if it doesn't hit the hole going down there, she could have a lot of work coming back. That's true, but she just can't. She's coming off the birdie at 17, almost the same length putt, maybe a little longer at 17, but this one very, very fast. And a little tip when you're behind the hole like this, very fast putt, a lot of times you'll see the players hit the ball in the toe of the putter because it makes more of a dead putt, doesn't give it a lot of overspin and roll, it just starts it down the hill. Crafter for birdie. Go into the playoff. Be there, ball! Yeah. Yeah. Yes! What a wonderful, wonderful finish for Crafter. A little short of two in the playoff. These two were involved in the playoff, as we mentioned, a few years ago at Farmore when Crafter got her only win in Fort Lauderdale. And now this big crowd begins to quiet as Tina Barrett, who had that four-shot lead with nine holes to play, needs this to be in the playoff with Lopez and Crafter. Can't see off to the side of the green. Lopez asking for quiet. Now she will watch. Will there be two or will there be three in the playoff? Tina Barrett. And look at Nancy Lopez. Lopez. Yeah, Lopez waiting for her. So the double bogey at 15, the bogey at 17, and the bogey at 18 for Tina Barrett. That's the killer, but they're very tough holes. Well, here is what the battle is all about, of course. And we have a playoff between Lopez and Crafter. You and I have seen the footage as we look at the beautiful trophy for this Ping Cellular One LPGA Golf Championship and the roses so synonymous with this fabulous city of Portland. And what a fabulous show <laughs> with us today. Well, Jay, Nancy was in a playoff last week, as we saw earlier, as you said, in Springfield. She's been in several of them. Jane Crafter never in a playoff. She made that long putt to beat Nancy on the last hole at Farmore. Um, both hearts will be pumping, but I'll guarantee you Crafters will be pumping a little harder. 
Let's go down to Eric Johnson. Yeah, down here with Phil Scott at the uh, 18th green here, president of this tournament. Phil, you have to be just uh, feeling great. This thing's this going right to the wall. This isn't all bad, is it, Joe? Yeah, wonderful day, great field. Obviously going to be a super winner. This thing seems to get better and better every year. I know this is a, another big uh, boom in terms of attendance. Uh, the weather has been nice, and everything seems to be turning up roses. Yeah, I, I can't imagine a better tournament, really. We've had uh, increases in the, in the crowd every day, 50% uh, increase today over yesterday in the crowd, and the weather is superb, and, and Nancy being involved with Jane is, uh, is just great. They're both wonderful people. Now, how do you arrange it every year so that it comes right down to the final hold? Do you have something to do with that? Yeah, it's great management. <laughs> yeah, <it's, laughs> I don't know. The golf course seems to play well for them. They enjoy it. Uh, it's not an easy course, as you know, and uh, I think the cream just comes to the top here. If you look at the past winners, we've just been amazingly consistent with excellent players winning this. There just really hasn't been a fluke in the 21 years we've been involved. All right. Ready for the playoff. And getting ready for the playoff is Jane Crafter, who came through at the wire. On these tough, tough finishing holes, it was crap. Got herself into a tie. And she and Lopez will come to 18. Here's crap putt for Birdie at 18. Crafter getting into the playoff with Lopez for this championship. We will be back to cover the action. A little extra something for you on this Sunday afternoon from Portland. But first, these messages from your local station. Jane Crafter with that record time 64 to open play here on Friday had a two shot lead. She shot by that lead, Tina Barrett. With her 369 yesterday with a two shot lead. And now at the end of regulation play, it is Crafter and Lopez tied for the lead. And the playoff begins here at 18. Crafter coming off brilliant birdies at 17 and 18 to get into this playoff. And she's not teeing off first because she made a birdie on 18. She's teeing off first because they chose numbers out of a hat, and she obviously drew number one. Good swing. Good swing. Good swing. Good swing. Down the middle. And coming toward the left side, and just about even with that bunker on the right side there. It's all right, she says. Yep, it is all right. And just about the same distance she was just a little bit earlier when she played the hole. Now Lopez, who hit a wonderful tee shot here, only about 135 from the pin, has her driver out again. Another boomer. You know what? If she had taken that ball, she could just about drop it to where she hit the tee shot from when she played the 18th hole. It's almost in the exact spot, maybe about five yards to the left, but the same distance. Many of you are probably just tuning in, just coming back from a Sunday afternoon and expecting to see the news on one of your stations. But you are watching a playoff in the Ping Cellular One LPGA Golf Championship from the Columbia Edgewater Country Club here in Portland, Oregon. We show you scores from the tournament as Nancy Lopez and Jane Crafter have tied at the end of 54 holes at seven under par. Jan Stevenson and Tina Barrett at six under. Donna Andrews, Caroline Keggy, and Marta Fugaris Dotti of Spain all at five under par. The playoff here at the 18th, par four, 383 yards. It has been the most difficult hole of the tournament, but Crafter mastered it just moments ago with a birdie. Jane Crafter and Lopez have been in the playoff before at Farmore, as we mentioned. Crafter earlier today talked about the pressure of playing here. No, I don't feel any pressure. Uh, you know, probably not many people expect me to win. I'm just going to go out and do the best I can. 
and uh, you know hope that, that that is the result. But you know whichever way it is, it's fun to be in contention. It's fun to be out there in the last group, and I'm just going to go have a good time. And Mary Bryan, it was fun to see her birdie 17 and 18 and have this opportunity. And what's interesting, Jay, it's sort of like David and Goliath. You know, Nancy hits the ball long. She's won 45 tournaments. Jane's won once. She's not known as a long ball striker, but a very straight ball striker. And she comes and she birdies 17 and 18, the two toughest par fours on the golf course. And so it's very interesting seeing these two ladies coming down the fairway now. Looking at Nancy. Nancy Lopez, who by her own admission has been playing very well this year, but hasn't been making the pressure putts. She made a couple today at 12 and 13 to get herself into position to win this tournament. She did have a little putting problem coming in. Now here's Crafter. Six iron in hand. Go, 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 go. Oh, it hit on the fringe and it's going to come up. For a moment, it looked like it might go in the drink, but it had enough. It's pin high, 22 feet to the right of the hole. Now the shot for Nancy, she came, she hit a good iron shot the last time, hit it solid, hit on the front of the green and stayed there. So will she take a little more club? Will she nose it in and try to work it a little right to left? Let's see what she does. Looks like an eight iron. Four. That's almost where she was. Exactly. She, if she doesn't know that putt, then no one does at this point in time. Jane a little closer to the hole. Nancy will be putting first, but Nancy will know the putt. She saw it move off to the right the last time she putted it. And Lopez is putting uphill. That's a plus with this pin position here. Again, we'll show you some scores. Meg National Guard providing some sound effects for us here and saluting these two players, Lopez and Crafters. This big, big crowd salutes them as they come to the green. And Jay, this is what the LPGA, the Tour of the 90s, is all about. It's been playoffs, it's been wonderful golf all year long. The depth of the tour is so much greater. Two nice, fine ladies and great golfers. We want to thank all of our network stations here in the great Northwest for staying with this playoff and letting the golf fans see Nancy Lopez and Jane Crafter in action to decide who wins the $67,500 first prize here. I want to thank all of the fans who have come out to help the wonderful charities this week. To take you back in time just a short time ago, this was Nancy Lopez from almost the same position putting for birdie. That ball appeared to start to go left and straightened out. Now, she has to have a feeling for what might happen here. Jay, that putt that she had uh, in the final hole, the 54th hole, is just maybe a foot, maybe a foot and a half closer than this one. Otherwise, it's the exact same line. She charged the putt at 17 and three putted. She doesn't want to put this putt by the hole four or five feet. Well, and she knows that Jane has one putted the last two holes she played, so she's got to feel like that Jane has a good opportunity to make hers. So Lopez for birdie and maybe the win. We are in sudden death, a playoff here in Portland. Lopez and Crafter. Lopez putting for three. She has put it above the hole a good three feet. Mm -hmm. Look, she thought she had that one. I'm sure that was moving just a little less speed. I think it would have moved off to the right and gone in. But, you know, it's... Uh, I putt the new putt now Jane Crafter. Now her putt is extremely quick. It goes a little left. 
She's putting for her third consecutive bogey. Birdie. A birdie, I should say. Yeah, her third consecutive birdie and the championship. She has birdied this hole two out of the three rounds of regulation play. And again, all Lopez can do is watch. Well, Pat took a look and slipped by on the low side. And it will be Lopez from above the hole, Crafter from below the hole. And this is not by any means a gimme putt or a tap in or anything of that matter. It's a downhill putt, maybe two and a half feet, very, very fast. that finger down the shaft. She's always putted that way, keeps the putter on line. A four for Lopez. You see that she knew it was not an easy putt, that fist and the clinch and the I got it type thing. And now they're going to go back out to 16 if Jane knocks this in. And 16, the par three. But Crafter still has a little work to do. Much easier putt than Lopez had. It's uphill, it's only about two feet. But it probably looks about 20 to Jane right now. Second hole of sudden death. Lopez and Crafter and some of the gallery beginning to head out there. We're going to take a local break while the players get to the 16th tee. Hope you're enjoying this sudden death playoff from the Ping Cellular One. Playoffs, apparently the order of the day as Crafter and Lopez make their way to the par 3 16th. The playoff in the Canadian Open today. Greg Norman defeating Bruce Litsky. Congratulations to Greg Norman, who will be our champion here. The gallery hustling out to 16, and here is Crafter on the tee. 175 yards, Jane Crafter with the three iron pin right in the center of the green. That's moving to the right. Oh, what a kick. Had a good kick of going way to the back of the green and rolling into that fringe. Hold up, please. Now, Nancy, I'm sure, will be hitting a four iron. And the key here is to get it high and land it soft. The green is hard, it's elevated, it's convex. If you can land it about 10, 12 feet short of the pin, it'll jump forward on you some. And she would have a good shot at maybe making birdie. These playoffs are tough because of the movement all over the place. The gallery's trying to get in a position to see what's going to happen. They're rushing around out there. Here's Nancy. Turn over. Turn over. And this is coming up pin high. Just past pin high. Nancy with about a 25 footer. 
then if you talk about advantage, Jay here, advantage would go to Nancy because where Jane is, she's coming back down the hill towards the cup. Be very quick on her. If you're just joining us, you're watching the second hole of Sudden Death, the Pagan Cellular One LPGA Golf Championship from the Columbia Edgewater Country Club in Portland, Oregon, along with Eric Johnson and Mary Bryan, Jay Randolph with you. It was Tina Barrett with a four shot lead with seven holes to play. She saw that lead go by the boards. Barrett and Jan Stevenson finishing up tied for third and fourth positions in this tournament, making about $26,000 a piece. Crafter has played the 16th birdie bogey par. Jane Crafter, 48th on the money list. So far this year with $102,000. Nancy, 10th on the money list with $295,000. Nancy has parred the 16th each of the three times that she has played it. Well, we talked about it yesterday, Jay, that Nancy has that look again, that, that focus, as she calls it. She said it's just, it's just a different thought pattern, and she just has that look that she's going to win. Well, you have to have a situation here, of course, today where it has been a very tough loss for Tina Barrett, the youngster who looked like she had this tournament in the palm of her hand and it slipped away in those final holes. Well, it's going to be a little tough for her and she won't sleep easy for a couple nights, but you know, golfers are resilient. She'll come back out. We'll be in Kent, Washington next week, the Safeco Classic at Meridian Valley, and she'll be ready to go on Thursday. She's a good player, just a couple shots couple tee shots is what killed her now crafter she's on the fringe will she put her chip i think she'll probably put it and that it'll be very fast best round of the day the 66 by jan stevenson lopez finishing with a 69 crafter birdie 17 and 18 to get into this playoff and while we have a minute jay on behalf of all the lpga players you know the people of portland are just been wonderful. The TGI guys are great. And I have to say it's one of the favorite stops on the LPGA. Yes, as you mentioned earlier, they like to pack these greens up and travel them, I know. <laughs> Although there is a way, I believe uh, me, Charlie Meach can figure it out for us. It has been treacherous playing and of course the shadows playing havoc with reading the greens right now late in the evening. Now Jane is right up against the fringe. So what she's going to have to do here, she's got her choice. She can one, try to hit the top part of the ball, getting a lot of overspin on it, or she'll put her hands ahead and try to pop down on the ball and give it overspin. It's your choice. It's a matter of what you're comfortable doing. She won't take a lot of time over this. About a four and a half footer. Mm -hmm. Now the door's open for Lopez. Now Lopez's putt, not an easy one. I don't think there really is an easy putt on this golf course because they're very undulating, very subtle greens. It's going to break from her like right to left, and it's about a 25 footer. These are the putts when Nancy came out on the tour in 78 and won all her events five in a row for one thing as a rookie. These are the putts she said that just look like two footers to her. There's 20 and 25 footers. She said she just made them all the time. She said, I don't know what's happened. They just aren't as easy as they used to be. Well, she's been a great inspiration to so many players. And it was her play that had a lot to do with elevating the talent out here. No doubt about it. Sort of the Arnold Palmer of the LPGA. This for the win. Come on, break, see, break. Oh, I can't believe it did not break. Neither can she. And green slopes from right to left. You think it would have to go down that way? She's trying to decide whether she's going to put that or. And she, she's going to. Mm -hmm. And I think that's smart. Get I the do hole. too. Stand back there and let Jane try to make hers. And, but she was very careful to make sure she wasn't going to stand in Jane's line or that it would bother her as to where she's going to stand. Lopez has her three. Now, 
I'd say Crafter's putt is a good four, maybe four and a half feet, Jay. That's what it looks to be. She's doing a little work there. And uh, all the confidence in the world that she's going to make it. I mean, she feels she has to feel like that after 17 and 18. You know, I was interested in her remarks about there's no pressure on me particularly, and not too many people give me a chance to win here today. <laughs> but those birdies at 17 and 18 were really brilliant stuff. And uh, now, though, she must make this one. Must make it to force a third playoff hole. Get it, get it. Nancy Lopez has won her 46th LPGA title in a sudden death playoff over Jane Crafter. Lopez with $67,500 and the title. Well, Jay, that's two in a row for Lopez. She's finished second three times this year. Now back-to-back -back wins, as you said, in playoffs. 47th victory, and she's now won $362,000. And there with her is our Eric Johnson. Eric, let's go to you very quickly. Like a million bucks or at least 67,500. I tell you, I'm, I feel great. I'm just, uh, I feel like I'm dreaming. Uh, the last two weeks have just been really good for me. I've played real well and just hung in there and just happened to pull a couple out. So I'm just thrilled. This was like a Wild West shootout coming down the stretch <laughs> run here, 16, 17, that's 18. You guys are neck and neck. It was. Uh, all day it was like that. And, you know, that's the type of golf I like to play and I like to watch too because my fellow players have played so well. And, and to be able to go out there and beat them, you know, that's what it's all about. About the time you're on 9 and 10, a crowd of 18, now the rumbling started, people were whispering to each other, Nancy's charging, Nancy's charging. You had to feel very confident you were putting well and everything was working Yeah, out. I was making the putts I needed to and I was hitting the ball well um, and I just said, well, just be patient, maybe things will fall your way. You've won here in the past, you win here again, uh, this has to be right up there on your list. <laughs> Definitely, Portland's one of my favorite places, it's a beautiful place to come and play golf and haven't been here for a few years because of course my family's come first and I've been... Uh, you know, with them starting in school the last couple of years, but um, Portland's a, a great place to come and play golf. Nancy, congratulations Thank on a you. big win. Thank Nancy you. Nancy Lopez, winner of the 1992 Ping Cellular the One Championship. Jay and Mary, back up to you. And tears of happiness for the legendary Lopez, who won here in 1974 the United States Golf Association Junior Championship. She's now won this tournament three times. She wins this one in sudden death. Thanks to everybody. We hope you've enjoyed it. For all the gang, Jay Randolph saying so long from the Columbia Edgewater Country Club in beautiful Portland.